QuickBooks Desktop 2024 Normal Cycle Estimate Sales Order and Purchase Order. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. Here, first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Company file. We set up in a prior presentation the enterprise version so we can focus in on the unearned revenue. Under the View tab, we have the Hide Icon Bars and the Open Windows, Selected Open Windows. Then on the left-hand side, the home page currently being open if you don't have the home page open you can go to the company drop down and open up the home page i'm going to open up reports which is usually my custom every time by going to the reports drop down up top company and financial going to go down to that balance sheet standard report and then i'm going to change the date to 12 31 27 and then I'm going to customize it as well to make it a little bit larger on the font. You can go to the fonts and numbers, change the font. I'm going to bring it up to 14 for the presentation purposes. Say OK, yes, and OK. So now it's a little bit larger. I'm going to go to the reports drop down again, company and financial, this time the profit and loss tabbing 010127 to 123127 our practice problem will be in that year so we have nothing to start with in the report i'm going to customize it just to show what i'm going to do every time customize fonts and numbers change the font size i'm going to bring it up to 14 okay yes and okay all right back to the home uh, page what we want to do first is go through this process and think about the normal process when we do not have a deposit or unearned revenue to have something to compare and contrast to. If you're not used to using the uh, enterprise version, you might not be used to this new this uh, sales order. So we'll kind of throw that in the mix as we do our normal process. So first, I'm going to do an estimate and then we're going to create a sales order from the estimate. And then I'll use that to do the purchase order as though we're going to be selling uh, uh, inventory. So let's imagine someone comes in and they have an order for a custom surfboard or whatever. And that's what they want to be purchasing. We're going to make an estimate to say how much it's going to be costing. Now, they might not accept the estimate. If they do accept the estimate, then we're going to create the sales order and that kind of locks in the estimate both of these being non-reporting transactions so we're going to record all kind of the non-reporting transactions first now if i need to order the surfboard because i don't have it on hand then i would have to go to the vendor side and create a purchase order if i'm using a purchase order for the purchasing process which will be a request for the for the order on my vendor side of things so that i can receive the surfboard and then turn around and take usually the sales order to create the invoice, which I can now invoice the client. Now, I'm not going to put in the down payment, which is the added wrinkle that might happen in this scenario where I'm going to take some money down when I create the sales order because I want to contrast it first with just the process where I don't have to do that first. All right. So we're going to start with an estimate. Let's make an estimate. And someone comes in and they're saying like, I want a surfboard, man. And, and we're so, so we're, and we're like, okay, we have surfboards. And they're like, no, we want some psychedelic, like airbrush colors on it. And like, okay, we're going to have to order that one. Let, let's see how much it'll cost. We're going to say, and I'm going to say, I'm going to name the customer a number one and then tab. And I'm going to put, just say, this is the normal process. So I'm going to try to name every, everything in here. To relate to the normal process i might misspell some things as i go 
But the point is, I want to differentiate this normal process from the next process by labeling everything with a one and then the fact that it's going to be our normal process. So I'm going to say tab and uh, it says quick add. We'll do the quick add. I'm going to copy that thing right there and then no class uh, estimate. I'm going to make this as of 2027. So this is going to be 01, uh, 0127. Do, do, tabbing through, tabbing through, tabbing through. I'm going to make a new item, which I'm going to say once again is a number one. I'm pasting this in. Number one, and then I'm just going to say item. So tab, QuickBooks, we don't have that. So uh, I'm going to make the item. So I'm going to say, let's make the item. I'm going to say it's an inventory part. So we have to deal with the inventory because I'm imagining we're purchasing the surfboard here. Uh, so we're going to have to say, I'm just going to tab through this normal item. Okay, I'm not going to category. I'm not going to deal with categories right now. I'm just going to go down to the description. And once again, I'm going to call it uh, normal process item tab. And then the cost, let's say it costs $100. And then tab, it's going to go to cost of goods sold when we sell it. Tab, tab, tab. And then on the purchase side, same thing. When I'm sorry, cost of goods, yeah, when we sell it. And then the sales price, we're going to sell it for $175. So we're going to make $75 on the sale. Is there tax related to it? They already have some taxes set up. Let's make it a taxable item so that we have to add the complexity of sales tax in our practice problem. And I'm going to make a new account, the income account, which I'm going to call income, income, and then tab the normal process. So again, it'll create another income account, which is going to be an income type of account, income, normal process. So I can then again, distinguish the processes with different income accounts. You wouldn't probably do that in practice, but it'll be good for a practice problem. I, I don't have any inventory on hand yet because I haven't purchased any yet. I'm going to use this estimate to then create the sales order. And once I have the sales order, then uh, we'll use that to make the purchase order to purchase the psychedelic airbrush surfboard that this person wants. Now, normally if someone wants a psychedelic surfboard airbrush, I'm going to want a down payment because, you know, <laughs> I would like to have some confidence that they're going to pay me on it, right? But what's this going to do? This isn't going to do anything in terms of financial statements. It's not going to record anything on the financial statements. It's just an estimate. So we're like, hey, you know, that's going to be what that's going to be costing you. The markup is 75. Now you're the format down here could be different depending on how you have it set up. But we have this is the charge. This is the markup. This is the sales tax, which gets us up to 188.56. So bottom line, you're going to owe me 188.56. So we're going to say, okay, save it and close that. If I want to track that, can I do any? I can't see it on my profit and loss or anything. Nothing new is happening here. But if I if I go back to the home page and I go to my customer center, dropping it down, customer center. Then I can say, and this is a little bit squished because I've increased the size of the screen to 150. So you might drop it down a little bit to 125 to toggle back and forth. But I could make this over here and I'm looking for a normal process. I can't see anything because I'm working in the future. So I'm going to change the date range to say all dates. And so there it is. There's our estimate. So we see our estimate there. Another place you could go to see the estimate, just so you're aware of it, if you go to the list drop down and you go to the chart of accounts and you go to the bottom of the chart of accounts, uh, the bottom of the chart of accounts, <laughs> then you've got your estimates here. And if you and it's a non-posting transaction, so it's not hitting the financial statements. If I double click on that, then you, this is another kind of report that you can get to fairly easily. You can also run reports for the estimates in uh, the drop down up top where you have uh, possibly in the sales. So you've got the sales. So it's not under sales. It's under the, the jobs, time, mileage. And then you've got some uh, estimates down here. We've got the estimates uh, by job. So you've got some reports that you can run in there. But oftentimes internally, we'd probably be going to the customer center and saying this is the uh, particular customer, we have an estimate basically outstanding for them. 
Uh, now, the next step would be if I go to my home page to look at the flow here, we have an estimate. Nothing has happened. We're going to email most likely or give the estimate to the person. And if they accept the estimate, then we could go ahead and you might make an invoice from the estimate. That's what we would do if we didn't have this sales order in our workflow. But if we do have a sales order in the workflow, then we might go ahead and put this middle step in and say, now I'm going to accept the estimate. That's very important if you're like in a job cost system where oftentimes you might make many estimates, many of which are not accepted so that you can distinguish the ones that have not been accepted and the ones that have been accepted, right? So that's an added basically step. Now you could just open up the sales order and then type in the new customer, but most likely you might be going into the customer center over here and I'd open up the estimate, double clicking on it, and then you've got your sales order up top. So I can create a sales order directly from the estimate, which is probably the best way to go or a good way to go because then the sales order will be the exact same as the estimate. So I'm gonna create a sales order of the estimate uh, has been copied to a sales order. If you if you wish, you can edit the sales order as you would any other QuickBooks sales order. You can add line items, modify any of the quantities or amounts. So if from the estimate, the guy's like, well, I want like da 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 on it or something, then you could still use the estimate. I mean, you might adjust the estimate and then pull it over, but you could, or make another estimate, right? But you could then pull it over and then adjust it over here when you have the more formalized document. Uh, uh, over here, it's saying you don't have sufficient quantity available to sell. We don't have any of these items on. That's okay because we're also going to use it to purchase with a purchase order. We have not yet done that. So we're going to have to track the inventory. So I'm also going to use this to make a purchase order uh, request. Uh, but before I did that, if I was going to, and then it says want to avoid negative quantities. Okay, I'm going to say, okay. Before I did that, I might want to finalize the sales order to make sure it's finalized and use that then to make the purchase order, which we'll do, uh, which we'll do next here. So now we have the sales order. It's once again for the normal process. That's our customer. I'm going to make the date as of 010127. So I'm saying it's happened. Let's make it 010227. So they accepted it the next day. Tab, 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 tab. And then uh, if there was a purchase order uh, number from it, meaning if I was selling to a company and not an end user, they might have a request that came to me with a purchase order, right? Because they're requesting inventory from me. So if that was the case, I put the purchase order number in here and that can help me to kind of tie out my forms. The item pulled in like normal, the rate is pulling in. So once again, everything looks normal here. Uh, you could see uh, the active estimate on the right. I'm gonna close this out. Still though, nothing is being recorded yet at this point in time. We're still just kind of saying this has been finalized. We're gonna act on it now by actually doing what we need to do to get the job done. In this case, we're imagining going to the vendor and ordering this custom surfboard. Now I'm not gonna print it in this case. In in practice, you would probably email it right to the to the client. I can save it. I'm gonna go up top and save the sales order. So now it's been recorded, but again, nothing has happened with it. So if I, if I close this, for example, and take a look at it, we're gonna say now in normal process, customer number one, we've got the, uh, we've got the transactions and we're looking at uh, all the trans, all date ranges, and we've got the sales order. You can run another report from it. You could look at it this way, lists drop down, chart of accounts, going to the bottom of the chart of accounts, we see the sales orders, another non-posting transaction. In other words, that didn't record anything to the financial statements. But if I double click on that, you get a report this way. Closing that out, if you go to the reports up top and uh, we go down to the sales. So here we have the open sales order by customer, which could be a useful report to be running, right? So now these are the ones that have been processed uh, to the sales order side of things, and there's our sales order. But oftentimes we might be using this report then to go back to our customer center here and say, once I have the sales order, let's go to my home page. The next process, this would be where I might collect the prepayment. 
if I was going to do that, either by selecting receive payment here and then making a negative receivable or turning on the prepayments and collecting the deposit. But I'm going to imagine we don't get a prepayment this time so that we can see the normal process without the prepayment. So the next thing that's going to happen to us is we're going to order the surfboard, the psychedelic surfboard. We're going to get it. And so we're going to make a purchase order so that we can then order it from our vendor and then receive it. And once that happens, then we'll turn back around and create uh, the invoice. So let's do that. If I, I, the way we probably would do that is to go into here and say, now we have a sales order. I'm, the next process would be from the sales order, I'm going to make a purchase order. So I'm going to make a purchase order now. And it's going to say specify uh, what to include in the purchase order. I'm going to create the purchase order for all allowed items, meaning everything down here. If there were multiple items, I'm putting them all on there. You could create a purchase order for selected items if you had multiple items and you wanted to distinguish them. But I'm just going to say all items making the purchase order. And now this is going to go to my vendor. So once again, I'm going to call the vendor normal process one normal process vendor because I want to have all of them tied out to this scenario so we can compare it with the next scenario, right? So I'm going to say tab, I'm going to quick add the vendor, and then I'm going to put this in as well as 010, let's say 327, tab, 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 tab. I'm going to close this on the right. Item is pulling in properly, and it's $100. Notice here, we only have the cost. We don't have our markup here because we're purchasing it. So it's not $175 and we don't have the sales tax because we're imagining the sales, the tax is only being applied in this case when we sell the item, not when we purchase the item. So this is just the cost to us. But once again, it's just a request, internal document. We're requesting and we're imagining that we have the ability to request something without paying for it yet at that point in time. Uh, if that were the situation, that's what a sales order does. Now we're requesting from our vendor to send us the psychedelic surfboard with a bill in it possibly, and then we will pay it, right? So I'm going to say save and close. And once again, nothing has been recorded. <laughs> These are all non-recording trips. So I'm going to close this back out. And if I go to my vendor center now, drop down vendor, vendor center, I can see here, if I change the dates again to see all of the dates, all dates, there's my purchase order. So now I have uh, my purchase order. You can also see that if I went to the lists drop down chart of accounts, bottom of the lists, there's our purchase order, another non posting transaction. So if I go into it, uh, the purchase order, there's a report this way. You can also see reports in the reports drop down and go down to the purchases. And we're looking at the open purchase orders, for example, or open purchase order detail if you wanted, or open purchase order by job, depending on the circumstances. Let's look at the detail. So there it is, there is our purchase order. But once again, nothing being reported or recorded to the profit and loss or to the balance sheet. You can't see it as clearly on the balance sheet because it already had data in it, but nothing has been recorded to either of these. Now, that's the starting point. We're gonna continue on with this and collect the inventory and enter a bill, and then we'll continue on with it next time. However, I'm gonna open up QuickBook, I mean, uh, uh, Excel, and I wanna take a look at this from an Excel standpoint as well. I'm gonna bring this down to like 125, and then, so I can see it a little bit better, and then I'm just gonna set up an Excel worksheet so we can see the debits and credits in Excel because that's gonna be more transparent so we can see each step. So I'm going to say this one, the starting one is going to be the normal process, process. That's going to be my tab. I'm going to do this fairly fast because, because it's not an Excel course, but uh, you, so you don't have to actually do it, but I think it's useful to kind of do it if you want to. I'm going to right click on this. We're going to format the cells. I'm going to make this uh, currency negative numbers bracketed. I'm going to get rid of the decimals and no dollar sign. Okay, that's my normal starting point. Home tab, font group, I'm going to make it bold as well, just so it stands out. You don't have to do that. But when I'm recording, I'm told by my editors and producers that I have to be bold, I have to be bold. So I'm being as bold as I can. So there's going to be uh, the form, the account, and then I'm going to say this is debit. 
slash credit. And the credits I'm gonna say are gonna be negative. If my spelling is wrong, then I apologize. Okay, I'm gonna actually pull this down. I'm gonna say cut and paste it down here. I'm gonna scroll in a little bit. These are my headers for my journal entries. And I'm gonna make this my header label. So I'm gonna go up top and say home tab, font group, making this uh, black and white. That's what I typically do with my headers. I'm gonna center this one, home tab, alignment and center it. And so the first one we had, the forms are an estimate where there is no financial, fi financial uh, transaction. So in other words, nothing's being reported to my actual financial statements for that one. And then we had a sales order where once again, let's skip a column. This is where the journal entries would go, but there is none because there was no financial transaction. And then we entered a purchase order or order. And once again, no financial transaction. Okay. Okay. On the right hand side, I'm going to make my reports where I'm going to put an E here. I'm going to make my format where I'm going to post my stuff. So I'm going to make a skinny D and then skinny D. Let's make it really skinny. And then I'm going to copy the account, making that a little bit larger. And I'm going to say this is the beginning trial balance, which has nothing in it. These are going to be my entries. And then I have an ending trial balance. Let's just call it trial balance, trial balance. And then I'm going to pull this down. This is going to be what we'll post it to just so we can see this. I'm going to go home tab, font group, black, white, center, make this black, white. Okay. And I'll just add some accounts now so we can get a feel for what this is going to look like. And then once we start actually posting things, we'll see the debits and credits. So we're going to say there's going to be a cash account. There's going to be an accounts receivable. That's going to be one of the key accounts that we'll have to deal with. There's going to be an inventory account. Uh, let's just call it inventory. And then we're going to, there's going to be an accounts payable account and we'll just call an equity account there's going to be an income account and there's going to be a cost of goods sold which i'm just going to say cogs cost of goods sold and then that's going to give us our total debits and credits i'm going to say the credits are going to be negative in the worksheet so i don't have to have six columns but only three columns to do this and then my net income and i'm just going to color code this thing so it looks fancy i'm going to make my assets green so i'm going to go up top and say home tab font group i'm going to make this dark green and then white on my assets uh and then my liabilities i'm going to make those uh orange let's make that orange and white equity i'm going to make this lighter blue and then this white and then all of my expense accounts income uh, or uh, expenses, I'm going to make both of them the darker blue and then this white. And then down here, I'm going to make this kind of like my header one. But now it's the footer black and white. Okay, and then I'm just going to sum up. This is going to start with zeros. There's nothing in the beginning balances. That's different than what's in QuickBooks because we had something in the beginning balances. But I'm going to start with zero equals the sum brackets of this and then uh, my entries will be here and I'm going to I'm going to copy this across and then the ending balance is going to be equal to the sum of these two because my credits will be negative so this is going to be my little worksheet that we'll, we'll work on and then I'll do some fancy formatting down here because I'll say that if this is between if this is between negative one and one i want to make it green because then i'm good 
if because it's rounding i'll give it some rounding between negative one and if it's greater than one it needs to be red and then if it's less than one less than one negative one uh, hold on a sec less than negative one it needs to be red so let's test it out if this goes to if this goes to one it's good but if it goes to two red and if it goes to negative two red okay good so that looks good and then down here the income is just going to be this minus this so i'm just going to say this equals the sum of these two i'm adding them up because the income is going to be a credit or negative and so i know i'm doing this fast but i'm going to copy this across so this is going to be my net income and i want my net income if there's income it's going to be a credit here like like a 100 and if there's an expense it's going to be a debit so i don't want now it looks like i have a loss i don't i have income so i want to make it not red and then i'd like to indicate that it's good with green even though it's a negative number so i'm going to say right click i'm going to format the cell and i'm going to remove the number currency being negative and just make it normal and then i'm going to say conditional formatting if this is less than if it's less than uh let's say zero then we want to make it green it's actually good because that means the credits are greater than the debits and uh you want a green and then if it's let's actually make it less than let's say this is going to be if it's less than negative one so that that zero will be green so i'm going to make it green i'm sorry less than positive one <laughs> then it's going to be green okay so zero is included and then if i say this is going to be if it's greater than if it's greater than let's say zero uh then i want to make it red okay so that means if, if my if my cost of goods sold was at uh 150 this would be positive and it turns uh this it didn't turn red okay pause so uh let me do that again conditional formatting if this is greater than one we want it to be red okay so this turned out to be uh 150 it turns red okay i don't know exactly what i did there but there it is let's bring this back to zeros and then i like to make my little worksheet where i'm going to be doing data input a uh, blue i'm so i'm going to right click I'm going to format the cells for my data input or let's do it this way i'm going to go to the home tab font group bucket drop down my blue isn't there so i go to more colors and standard colors i like that blue right there that's the one i've worked with for a long time so that's the one i use you can use something different if you want i'm going to put borders around it border blue do the same thing here home tab font group border blue and then I'm going to put borders around this whole thing. Okay, so there's our little worksheet. I know that was kind of a long, tedious worksheet, but I think it's useful to, to set up. Hopefully it'll make more sense. Uh, it might not be what you're kind of used to because it has debits and credits on one column, but uh, hopefully that'll make sense and we'll play with that uh, in the future.